Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about John Ruiz, who versed uh, Andrew Galata. Uh, John Ruiz was the WBA heavyweight champion. Um, wasn't much very exciting uh, during the career of uh, John Ruiz. Um, John later on in his career he'd get to where he'd hit you and significantly throw off with a, uh, a right lead and then he'd grab you. So people really didn't like his style but something uh, or a lot of people but he had moments in his career this, this guy was a very, very fast uh, uh, combination puncher and very exciting at moments in his career. Uh, now, I'm talking about this fight because this is when you see a trainer slash coach totally go berserk and get ejected from a boxing match. Uh, something which uh, I had never seen before. I've never seen that since then. And uh, so it, it was a remarkable fight. Uh, I want everyone, I'll put down in the description box a link to this fight um, and probably in the, uh, I'll pin a post comment with the link on it is what I'll do. Um, every younger boxer needs to watch this fight because things do get out of control or are apt to get out of control. Uh, very quickly and uh, chaos take hold very quickly and we're going to talk about some significances of, the, of this um, when you go watch this fight you're, you're going to see that eventually in the end uh, that the guy that won the fight was the guy that should have won the fight there'll be no question <clears throat> with concerns to that to you um, Galata was the biggest cheater in boxing and uh, king of low blows just the king of low blows this guy uh, he quit several times before uh, most of you who follow Mike Tyson have probably seen him quit against Mike Tyson. Uh, maybe you've watched him. He fought Lennox Lewis. Uh, possibly he quit there. Maybe he just got knocked out and stayed down. Uh, or knocked down and stayed down. Uh, you, you will see uh, low blows uh, you'll see low blows. You'll see hitting after the bell. You will see monumentally hitting behind the head. Uh, and you'll see that something was going on. A fix was in uh, most certainly by this referee. Something was bad wrong with this referee. And if you watch Norman Stone, Ruiz's trainer, not only is it hilariously uh, funny because Norman Stone was quite the character. I just watched a recent uh, or more recent interview with him and he's still a piece of work. Very nice guy. Uh, but what you see coming off there, you see a very crazy guy. But he had a reason to be crazy. The young trainer should take a page out of Norman Stone's book to, irrespective of anything anybody's going to say about you, your job and your first job is to be the 
corner backbone, corner man, corner protector for your fighter. That's your number one job. Everything else is a way down here uh, following a uh, big distanced second as far as your jobs go. And unfortunately, I've not seen uh, trainers pull a Norman Stone today. I'll do it in a second. Uh, I'll get vicious in a heartbeat. I'm not. I'm not a big man. I'm about. Uh, I'm shrinking some now. See, I've had this neck surgery, and I got a plate back here, and then automatically, uh, not everyone, but. I don't think it may be everyone but when you get older your height goes down it's it doesn't stay where it's at there's a lot of settling in the, the human body uh, so I'm really uh, and I'm not being braggadocious about this one bit because I hate the responsibility of having to be this way uh, but I know it's necessary for me to be this way, uh, I'm a little over five foot eight inches uh, at the moment. I, I was taller than that by a minimum of an inch, I believe, or maybe more. Uh, but I'm around five eight right now, and uh, uh, I got some weight on me, so I weigh probably 170-ish pounds. Uh, I'm doing pretty good with that because I got over 220 pounds a couple of years ago. Um, but this is not about the weight or size because if you're six foot five, you need to be. This needs to be going on with you too. And this is the problem. So I'm not addressing this braggadociously. Uh, I'm just not seeing even big, big men that are a lot stronger and more imposing or could be more imposing than me uh, command the area for which is around them. And that's what I always do. Uh, young trainers, when you walk into a room and you've got your boxer with you, you need to command the room. Impose your will. Let that sink in for a second. Impose your will. Uh, Norman Stone on that night had announcers bashing him with the exclusion of Roy Jones Jr. whom made the comment, and I'm sure got in trouble for it, he protects his fighter. Uh, and you can't knock him for that. Uh, but he completely lost control. And uh, he did right. He did closer to right in losing all of this control uh, and blowing off at the mouth physically assaulting Andrew Galata's trainer uh, while the fight was going on. So you young guys need to go watch this fight. You need a Norman Stone. Uh, I'm seeing too much acceptance uh, out of young trainers, too much calmness. You, you need to show your fighter calmness and uh, will impose on your on your fighter uh, but I'm not even seeing that and I'm seeing almost zero well here's what I'm seeing I believe I'm going to um, petition this decision or we need to look into these things that are happening uh, that we may better the sport uh, Newsflash to you young trainers. Uh, sport's been going on over a hundred years and in other forms has been going on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands. And uh, 
that type of attitude is why boxing is the way it is today. It's why cheaters get uh, get let through cheating. And everybody, look, I want to admit something to you. Uh, we fight cheating back with cheating. You, you, you. You hit us on the back of the head, we're going to hit you back on the back of the head. See? Uh, you give us a low blow, uh, we're going to give you a low blow. There's going to be some payback somewhere. Uh, maybe an elbow, a low blow, uh, maybe an arm hold, something. But we're not going to let, let the other guy go unchecked. And we're not going to rely on a referee uh, the referee may get one shot at it, and after that, the referee has proven after the one shot he gets at controlling that fight uh, doesn't perform, then he has, in fact, lost control of that fight, young trainers. One, one shot, you, a low blow, and then a low blow comes later on in the round after that warning, then a low blow comes the next round, you need to understand that the referee is not controlling the fight, at least for your fighter. And you should never put a kid through that. Ever. Never. Ever. And you should stand up at the risk of, of what happening to Norman Stone. He gets ejected. Ejected from the corner and is in the dressing rooms watching the fight on a monitor. And now that's filmed too, so you get to see it. Uh, so you just, young trainers need to stand up. You need to, uh, and when you see, really, you, um, in the description box or a pinned comment, it will definitely be in a pinned comment, the link to this fight. And you need to watch the fight uh, in its entirety to see what was actually going on. Now all that being said, uh, in the beginning I said the right guy won, and he did. But I'm starting to think that maybe boxing would be better off had the right guy not won. You see, uh, I can tell you right now there would have been at some point in time uh, physical payback to that referee in some way, shape, or fashion. When you, If you are going to be protecting young boxers, young man, you need to be doing just that. And if you're not capable of doing that, you don't need to be the chief second in anybody's mm -hmm. corner. You got that? You understanding me? If you do not have the backbone to have 200, 2,000, or 20,000 people around you, if that intimidates you and you like, oh, well, I couldn't do nothing because all these people are standing around, uh, you don't need to be training kids. You don't need to be training adults. You don't need to be training boxers. It's as simple as that. We've had a lot of problems here in Latin America with issues like this. And uh, everything from a phony weight scale, because uh, they're not using the bar type, but that you can uh, finagle those as well uh, quite easily. I ain't going to tell nobody how to do it because half, half the people will be out there doing it. Uh, but we have step-on scales that uh, are digital. And come to find out those things have been set wrong. Uh, uh, everything. Lying about the age, lying about the... the uh, and you just... You, you know, I can't go up and check a guy's ID. Right, a uh, whole host of things, whole host of things that uh, I can't even remember. 
So we're not tournament fighting here uh, because I'm going to protect Joe at all costs. Uh, got a couple of other guys I, I work with. They're going to tournament fight, and I told them uh, I, I, won't, I won't be there. I'll get you ready. Uh, I'll get a younger guy to be there for you. Uh, but I, I will I will not do do that. Uh, single matches I'll do uh, because I fully expect b before uh, a fight here to be ejected or at the very minimum least be told you can't come back here. And that's a badge of honor for me, see. Uh, when the corrupt and the cheaters and the scoundrels and the low down dirty right and yellow belly, belly skunks don't want you back you're doing something right you're literally doing something right it's not out of fear that uh, I'm, I'm not going into into these tournaments with these boys it's not out of fear that uh, I'm not putting Joe in in tournaments here in this country uh, Panama has been a haven for us uh, Joe will be in some tournaments in Panama as an example it's a cleaner well ran program and due to a lot of people and probably due to more so than anybody uh, due to the Durants in uh, Panama so Panama is a good place we've been there we fought we won just like we went everywhere else. Uh, we know losses are coming. Uh, that's amateur boxing. And really, it's professional boxing unless you're picking and choosing opponents uh, other than Rocky Marciano uh, with the other loudmouth that won. Uh, I'm not so sure, but I won't make this about that. Uh, you guys know I'm old school, but you got to you got to really stand up for your kid. You, un you understand? If I was with, uh, with uh, uh, Kirk Williams, if I was with uh, Zeke Castro, if I was with Joe, and we were in... Uh, I'll use the term because it was the craziest place to have a heavyweight championship fight, historically to me. If me and any of those three guys, or me and any other guys, if we were in Lewiston, Maine at a tournament and there was finagling going on, I'm crossing the damn ring. I'll hop up in there in a damn second. I'll slap the shit out of a referee if they're if it's very flagrant what they're doing and I want you to think as a trainer you need to go in there and be uh, just totally abrasive or uh, violent or volatile that is not what I am saying I want you to go watch the fight that'll be in the uh, comment section the comment that will be pinned uh, so it will be at the top of the comments and go look at that what I am talking about is standing up for your guy. Uh, typically with me, uh, I've got quite the reputation around down here. Uh, if Joe or I go into a, a gym or we go to a tournament and we're anywhere in Colombia, we're anywhere in Ecuador, uh, we're anywhere in Venezuela, uh, we're anywhere in northern Brazil, uh, anywhere in Peru, uh, they know who we are real quick and they'll back the fuck up. And young trainers, you need to develop into a strong man that when you walk in the room, everybody, let me give you an example. I just gave you my, around my height and my weight, so you know I'm not... Uh, huge, huge, imposing physical guy. But 
I'm damn well imposing everywhere I go. Everywhere I go within 15 or 20 minutes of my presence, men around me start getting nervous. You know, I, uh, I could go hang out at a, uh, I don't know, a wedding event. And as long as I'm able to talk to the men and uh, just my presence, it's the aura I give off. And you got to come from a position of strength. Uh, you guys are very good at showing techniques and uh, your techniques are in conservation. Uh, but they're not in strength and dominance. Young, young trainers and you need to in, impose your will where you go uh, and I literally mean it if I uh, I'm trying to think of two guys if uh, I have to go to yesteryear to do that well no I'll go to today if I was in Tank Davis's corner just using this as an example and he was fighting uh, Roley Ramirez. And he was fighting Roley. The shit would get a little calmer with me there. You just have to trust me on that. Uh, the mouse would still be running. I'm not talking about the billing of the fight. But in the real world, in the real aspect of the thing, these people would be watching their P's and their Q's. Because everybody else does. See? Uh, good friend of mine, uh, you know, we weren't eating breakfast every morning. We wasn't spending the night over at each other's house. But uh, this guy helped me in monumental ways for 30, 30 years. And he was my friend. And I talked to him quite frequently a lot and that was Ernie Shavers and even Ernie Shavers told me one day you know what if I had uh, four or five people that was like you in my corner I would have won a heavyweight championship I didn't have guys in my corner that were that was that were standing up and getting in front of me when they needed to but he'd tell me I know you I know you would I know you would. And the reason why he told me that was he, he was a calmer to me. He was a calmer. And I don't want to go no further really than that. Other than I, I will tell you this. Uh, he was a very, very wise Christian man that loved Jesus. And he counseled me. And so even 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 with people like that and it's nothing you can't go in and start yelling in a room or raising cane and it's all in how you present yourself and the seriousness you carry yourself with it's the seriousness that you carry yourself with it's when you get riled up how you uh, what are your actions there you're riled up over this how do you respond to it if you're riled up over that how do you respond to it how do you walk in a room how do you shake somebody's hands when everybody else is laughing and giggling what are you doing what 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 type of a look are you walking around uh, with on your on your face uh, how do you approach another man how do you give a handshake and it's not hard to do today. I wouldn't have been able to do this if I were the same age today. Uh, if it's an age respect thing that I would have been able to do uh, uh, 50 years ago, I would have been laughed out of a place. But then again, 50 years ago, those old men were way stronger than I would ever have time to think about being. They went through a rougher, uh, stronger world. So my point here that I keep dwelling on is if you have to be uh, Norman Normie Stone 
for a day. Be Norman Stone for a day. But don't just sit there in silence. Don't just be accepting of everything that's happening. You're going to take a boy into a ring, you be that boy's man. And there's a big, huge responsibility there. And the responsibility is protecting that kid. And the responsibility is yelling and raising your voice when necessary. And the responsibility may end on catching the guy outside and giving him the one-two uh, after everything's concluded. Or finding out where this guy eats breakfast every morning, what Hardee's or McDonald's he goes to, and catching him there and correcting him. See, there's no auto-correction no more because men are not correcting, not correcting the people that are either corruptly, ignorantly, or uh, or whatever. For, whatever reason or another that uh, continually come against these fighters for whatever reason or another they're not being corrected and back in the day there was an auto correct button and we don't have that button no more there's no switch to do that no more nobody's doing that no more oh well oh my gosh I'll file an appeal. Every time, well, nothing. You know, raising your voice to file an appeal, writing a letter uh, to file an appeal. You don't even write letters no more. You don't even have to do that. It's not even that effort's not required. You just sit down and get behind the keyboard and send an email. I filed an appeal for you. I'm fighting for you. No, hell no, you ain't fighting for your uh, young boxers or young men. That's a damn joke. And put yourself, I would think about what you're telling these boys. I filed an appeal. I sent them a strongly worded email. Well, you know what? When you need defending and you're getting beat up or you're getting low blowed or you're getting rabbit punched or you're getting bit or you're getting kicked or you're being uh, put in an arm bar, uh, do you want an email sent out? Yeah, I'll protect you, young trainers. I'll be happy to protect every one of you. I'll just send emails out for you. That's not protection. And the way people need to wake up. So that's my rant on that. And everything that goes on with that fight, with the announcers joining in to the president, who is the referee in the ring, uh, is what's going on in this real world today. So this message and this fight, if you will please go down and watch it, young boxers, and definitely young trainers, uh, it's the world in which we live in. You got a bad leader, you got uh, a press corps cheering the bad leader and protecting the bad leader's decision. That would be Larry Merchant. Uh, Jew falsely so called because he believes in no God and those people have weaseled into about everything uh, in this world and God warned us about it they're not real Jewish people they are Jews falsely so called uh, but you get to hear his two cents in it and of course he's on the on the corrupt leader's side he's always been on the corrupt leader's side he's corrupt as hell and was since Sonny Liston. He was a joke that never should have been on HBO. And that's why people like Mayweather and uh, uh, Duran and a lot of others didn't like him at all. And uh, uh, so just stand up. I know it's been another long rant, but young trainers, stand the hell up for your, your boxers. Uh, 
because if you can't do that, you're not qualified to train a, da uh, a dog up here at the doggy school. See? Uh, you're not qualified to even do that. Got a lot of stuff going on in your head. You really think you're a very smart guy. Uh, you really think maybe you've come up with this or this. And you think a lot about yourself, but uh, uh, nobody else thinks a lot about you, see. Uh, everything's false in your head like a little boy that, that goes to school and on Friday he decides he's a little girl. See, you like that, see. Ain't nothing real about you. Nothing real going on with you. That's why I say fathers need to be involved. Uh, and boxers, if you have a dad that is involved, young boxers, in your, in your world and in your boxing world and in your business, uh, you, one day you're going to thank the Lord God Almighty that you had that. And we need more of that. Uh, and I like to step in for, for guys that uh, don't have daddy. Maybe their daddy's passed. Maybe their daddy's ran off. Maybe their daddy just doesn't take interest in them. And those are the majority of the issues in this world today too. So the last thing especially a boy with no father needs, is, is to go get a weak man to play daddy to him that don't really care about him enough to raise his voice for that kid. And I'm talking about going way beyond uh, voice raising. I hope, I hope I'm being understood. Uh, I hope I'm being understood. I'm the guy that stood in the gym right in front of a former IBF world champion and said, I will kick the shit out of you right here in front of all your guys you ever cross me again. You ever cross my son again. And he's the guy, the big tough guy that everybody loves with the pictures all over the wall and the championship belts and all this mess, stood there and said, yes, sir. And young trainers, that's the kind of man you need to develop yourself into. And until you can do something like that, and until you can stand like that, and be willing to, 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 to take the whooping or take the victory, you ain't qualified to train or coach a boy. Period. And this goes for all sports. So, um, coaches, you, you know, you're real quick to point out shortcomings in, in kids. And you're sitting there with more shortcomings than this kid would ever have. And the shortcomings the kid has is because of your dumb ass. That's a big chunk of this right there. And you're incompetent, so who would expect you to stand up for a kid? You're incompetent as hell. You're a fake, phony, tough guy. You know? Half of you, I'd get in a ring with you at my advanced age and a plate in my neck and a scar running halfway up my midsection through my belly button where I'm still hurting from surgery from several years ago and kick the crap out of you. Kick the crap clean out of you in your own gym. So people just need to think if you're going to be training kids, you need to be protecting kids. And I guess that's about where I'll end this here. Um, if you took offense, if you're a young trainer and you, you, this has offended you, you definitely needed to be offended. You needed to be offended. There'll be no apologies coming from up, up in here. No apologies from me. I'm sick of seeing trainers and coaches buckle down. Sick of seeing uh, technical geniuses that have zero emotion uh, in this sport and in other sports where, and, and these kids not developing good strong backbones and good strong hearts. And I don't care if it's offended you. If you're offended, you need to be offended. Ain't no two ways about it. Ain't no two ways about it. To the rest of everybody and to you young boxers and people in general,
please go down. It's a rather long fight, but you'll you you will enjoy this fight. Uh, from the ending of the first round on through it, there you're just sitting waiting for the next thing to happen, and it does happen. So uh, it will happen. Be patient, <laughs> it, and it'll happen quite frequently in that fight. Uh, you're gonna see a man that was labeled a complete nut and lunatic. Uh, but you know what? At least he stood up for his fighter. The complete nut and lunatic in my book is the wimp in the corner uh, that won't stand up and do something. Right? So, uh, there we have it. I'm always going to stand up for the men to be more protective of their, of their young boxers. And uh, so, finishing on a good note, getting pleasant here at the end of this thing. Uh, that fight will be pinned in the comment section. I love everybody to death. Even people that I'm trying to like to fire up underneath them, I love you too. And uh, blessings to my Christian brothers and sisters. And remember, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the President of Presidents, the General of Generals knocks on that door, answer it and open up and let him in because you'll be glad you did.